Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello, and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Mike. Hey! What's going on? Not much. It was Eclipse Day. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, okay. I feel like it was Eclipse Day for some of us, and for most of us, it was not Eclipse Day. For most of us, it was slightly darker than normal outside day. Sure, yeah. The difference, so I have not personally experienced a total eclipse. Uh, You know, we've had, obviously, we had the one back in 2017, and then there was this one, and at least here in, Northern Virginia, DC area. In both cases, it was a partial eclipse. It was like ninety percent coverage, but still, the difference between ninety percent and a hundred is is big. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I was like, kind of like waiting for it to get dark outside, and I guess it sort of did. It so, got it got a little bit darker, but more like darker slightly before sunset, kind of darker, and not yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, the pictures I've seen of the people that actually got to be in the total eclipse area look really cool. Yep. So, um, I'm sure, I'm sure it was awesome to see, uh, if you were there. Yep. Um, yeah. It's, it's funny. It's one of those experiences that I, from talking to people that have done it, you know, the totality is like once in a lifetime experience and then seeing the partial eclipse is like, oh, that was neat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the worst part is uh, a bunch of the people that um went to go up to like where I grew up to go see it, it was like uber cloudy up there. Yeah. So I guess like they 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 kind of couldn't really see it. <laughs> yeah, which which is the risk, right? You know, yeah. I uh I had a friend who who planned a trip like two years ago to do this and it was predicted to be like eighty percent cloud cover, so I ended up not going. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's one of those things like you can do all the right things to go see a total eclipse and then the clouds are just like, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is what it is. But yeah. definitely super cool. Yep. Um, be glad it's not a Death Star. Um, yes. <laughs> this isn't Scarif. Yep. Um, all right. So before we get to today, we are going to talk about we've got some news items surrounding tournament kits. We're going to do some list ideas for commandos. And... um range troopers and then we're going to talk some stats and these are 100 percent real stats <laughs> from game up link uh yo, yo, the... yo. before before we move any farther before we move any farther to all of you out there that thought jar jar binks was real i salute you um i appreciate everybody sticking with us as we got you all i'd like to thank polar knight um, from the legion discord for allowing us to use his homebrew units to play what Turned out to be a far more successful April Fool's joke than I had anticipated yeah. on everyone. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> look the the cast did not actually release on April first. I'm sorry to you poor Australian people where it was like April third, uh, but we did I, record I'm it on April first. I want to be clear. I'm not. I... I'm not sorry at all. <laughs> yeah, we did save Jar Jar Brinks till the end for a reason, uh, but yeah, those that was all homebrew stuff from polar night so uh, except obviously for the commandos which there was an actual article on and those that have been listening to the show for any length of time should know that as a policy we do not talk about leaks or spoilers that have not been actually leaked or spoiled so that should have been a dead giveaway yeah. <laughs> uh, for I mean, any of did, our we listeners did say it was april 1st like four times uh, we also did that yeah so, um, um you know if you're mad yeah. at us i'll take it be mad it's okay yeah you know? um i'm sorry we got your hopes up about quagon gen or whatever but uh yeah. i'm sure we'll see him eventually but it likely will not be 
what the version that we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So the rest of this podcast and all the podcasts for the rest of this year, at least, will be 100% real stuff. <laughs> so, probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So news item. Uh, we have seen some tournament kits and put some photos of the tournament kit box circulating with some like printed guidance from the tournament kit. Uh, relevant bits for, so that none of this is like an official AMG release or anything. Uh, these are from, I think, store owners that have been getting access to like the distribution site. But basically what it says, this is a store tournament kit. Uh, oh, it's okay. This is from Asmodee's site. Um, uh, quote, there are several ways to use this kit, and we trust you to choose the one that best suits your community. It can support up to 33 plus participants. Up to 33 plus participants. That's interesting phrasing. You can run a store championship event, several smaller events, or even a community paint night, something that brings players into your store. Note, this kit does not award an invite or qualify for any other tournaments. Um, that's an interesting caveat, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, flexibility organizers can choose what type of event to run and prizes can be used for one tournament or piecewise as the organizer wishes community store level tournament kits are the ultimate challenge for players to test their strategy and tactics against other members of their community exciting prizes contains alt art cards foils stickers and objective token bags to support a 32 player event with one tournament official um so i know i just read off a lot there the the part that people are really focused on is basically that this kit doesn't award an invite and that it specifies that in the kit. So I think there's a couple big bullet points here we need to highlight. First off is that this is a 2024 store tournament kit, which is slightly different phrasing than a kit we got last year, which was called the Store Championship 2023 Tournament Kit. Yeah. Which, which I think is a little bit of an important distinction in that this is a just a store tournament kit and the other kit was a store championship tournament kit. Yep. We might be like messing with semantics here, but uh, it's all it's, we got to go on right now. So semantics are, yeah, they're kind of, I get, I'm not going to say important, but they are all we have. Um, and what what's interesting here is it says you can run a store championship event with this store tournament kit. Yeah, that doesn't really doesn't really solve the distinction. <laughs> Correct. Issue. Yeah. Um, but I think what is clear at a bare minimum is that this is definitely different than last year. Yes. And that last year is a hundred percent rewarded an invite as long as you hit the player quota. Um and like that's what last year's kit was for. And whether or not there will be a kit that comes alongside this one, um, I think is an open question, but it sort of seems likely that if you can run a store championship event with just this kit, which seems this article seems to suggest you can do, then store championship events at least don't award invites through the kit but not this kit anyway well it's possible there's a world where store championships are just like eligible for invites they're just not in the kit right yeah right like that that's a possibility we know nothing yeah and that's the thing too i want to caution people about like jumping to conclusions about what this means you know some people have been like oh there's no invites anymore they're, they're doing away with worlds and i guess that's possible uh, but we don't we don't know that. There's nothing in here to suggest that. If anything, I think the fact that this explicitly says there's not an invite in the kit implies that there will be an invite somewhere else. Uh, otherwise, I don't know why it would call that out. Like, I mean, I think at a bare minimum it would call it out because there was precedent in previous years. We have had a some sort of sure I, some sort of whether it's an RPQ kit or a store championship kit or whatever the majority of store kits over legion's lifetime have 
come with an invite come with an in, invite in the box yeah. that that would be the reason if like if invites are not a thing anymore uh if there's a reason for this to call out the fact that there is no invite in the kit it would it would be because that would be the expectation based on previous years right um but i think it's just as likely that there's simply like an alternative kit or some other way that there's invites my hope here is that <laughs> i'm not going to call it a fiasco last year but the number of stores that were able to get their hands on multiple store championship kits and run multiple store championships with invites as i understand it was directly related to how many asthma day reps were willing to sell stores multiple <laughs> kits <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was it was like it was a problem that was related to uh, problems maybe not the right term but it was an it was a thing that was related to how much physical product a store could get of the kit right so if they're if they're attempting to divorce invitations the ability to procure invitations from how many tournament kits you can get that's not necessarily a bad thing right um in the like in a world where you're like okay i want to run 12 store tournaments this year you can now buy 12 store tournament kits and they don't have to worry about you giving out 12 store championship invites or whatever exactly yeah that's that's that is my hope for what this means whether that's reality or not I think we'll find out later yeah we'll see they said i think that they were going to announce what the new season structure was going to look like in like late april early may it's sort of unfortunate that i i know that at least for our area there's a lot of tournaments going on that may 4th weekend there's uh, yeah. It'd be sort of nice to know like what you're playing for <laughs> in advance of that. Uh and hopefully even sooner because you well, know I think going I think for tournaments a... is something you need to plan in advance pretty far. So I, I mean, know. I would be very surprised if you could play for invites on that that early. Um, like unless those events like know in advance that they're getting invites and in the dark, I don't think they'll be giving out invites. Probably not. I guess I'm disappointed that there's like, you know, May 4th is a big tournament weekend for any Star Wars related game, but yeah, certainly sure. at least anecdotally Legion. And uh, it will be it, it would be ideal in the future if we knew what the season was going to entail so that that could be sort of like a kickoff. Or, you know, even a little sooner for the new season, if that was the thing. Um, cause right now there's going to be a bunch of tournaments on May 4th that are just like, not that a for fun tournament is a bad thing necessarily. Uh, it's clearly not like for fun tournaments are totally fine. Um, but it seems like a natural spot to kick off a new season and that it's possible that whatever the new season looks like, is still going to be up in the air then. So, yeah, I think we just need clarity on what organized play for Legion is going to look like this year. And right now we have none other than, Hey, wait and see, um, which, you know, is a and, thing. And now uh, the wild speculation surrounding this kit, which right. yes, um, did, which... was not accompanied by any sort of announcement or anything. So people are drawing a lot of conclusions that probably will not end up being correct. Yeah, uh, and I think all of the information we have regarding organized play for this year, while it has come from, I'm going to say, official sources as far as like people on streams or whatever. Like, I don't think there's actually been a press release that's like, hey, you can expect us to tell you organized play, like our next organized play announcement is X. If I'm wrong about that, I'll eat, I'll eat crow. But I don't think there's actually been a press release on it. Um, or even a tweet or something or, that's like recorded somewhere in print. Right, like you would have yeah. had to like watch a stream or like... Right talk to an AMG person at a convention or like been in discord when an AMG person was like, Hey, yeah. So expect it around April or, or whatever. Right. Um, so I think, I think speculation is, is reasonable at this point. The fact that there is speculation right now is entirely foreseeable given how the information has been disseminated and not disseminated so far. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. It was, this is this is an avoidable problem. Yeah, <laughs> is really what I'm trying to say.
Yeah, information is the facts are the cure for speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> um, Turns out. Anyway, that's enough about that, I think. <laughs> I, I I don't know what the outcome is going to be relative to these invites. I will simply say that I loved that Worlds was enormous, even though it was a little bit of a debacle with the quantity of invites. I loved that it was huge, and I hope that it is even bigger next year. So Yeah, I totally agree. Um, all right. Shall we do some list ideas for range troopers and commandos? Do a little list building action? Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think people are probably pretty excited to get their uh, their new new hotness on the table. It feels like, um, I know that we like just got Geonosians, but they didn't really ever feel like the new hotness. <laughs> uh, they did the for. Yeah, they didn't really make any like splashes at tournaments. There were a couple of people that made top thirty-two at Worlds with Geonosians, which is something. Um, with with but with I would like to qualify uh, like asterisk that they made it to top thirty-two with at least one unit of Geonosians sure. in their army. Yes, <laughs> which which That's... I think is different than top 32 in with geonosians i feel like there's an implication there yeah and since they're not like a battle force it's a little bit harder to kind of accumulate you know high level stats on like what's it like you can look at an ewok army right or a wookie army and have your own separate category of stats for that but you know lists featuring at least one geonosian is not necessarily like its own separate this did not separate, have that's Poggle, a separatist or list Poggle lesser in it you know right like, yeah uh, that's a separatist list you know yeah, yeah uh so yeah but you're right they didn't feel that splashy i feel like ranch troopers and colon commanders are both going to feel a lot more splashy that's sort of what i mean these things these feel like geonosians had the possibility of like changing the game in serious ways and while they are definitely cool and definitely fun to play I don't think they really had an impact on the game that range troopers or clone commandos are going to have. Like these guys, these guys are going to change things for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. We've already talked a little bit about this. I definitely feel like clone commandos are going to change Republic list building. Yeah. And they're going to change the Republic mirror specifically. I am not sure that they will talk about this a little bit later when we get (laughs) stats from Adepticon. That's the third thing we're going to talk about, by the way, is Adepticon stats. Um, But I'm not sure they're going to change the equation like relative to Republic versus other factions that much. Yeah. Especially versus experimental droids. But uh, they're definitely going to, and maybe they will, I don't know. Uh, But they're definitely going to change the Republic mirrors and Republic internal balance significantly. They for sure will. They're also going to put pike lines six feet under. Um, Yes. (laughs) Like, like they're just dead. (laughs) Um, uh, I'm sorry. (laughs) I just sold, I just sold a box of pikes on eBay and I'm not ashamed. (laughs) (laughs) Like it was uh, not specifically because of commandos, but it was like sitting unbuilt still in plastic wrap on my shelf. And I'm like, you know, I like, I'm trying to clean up my garage. (laughs) You know, like I'm never gonna put these guys together. Yeah. Um, so I think to some extent there they also like um the Anakin pike lines also have to like rethink what they're doing because of that, right? Like pikes in general are such a liability with commandos in the equation. Um Yes. I you, agree with that too. You know, it, you just like you if you're taking a pike unit you can't afford to have it just get eaten by three 75 point units and you can't do anything pretty much yeah i mean you can shoot them back i guess but it's not going to be nearly as we 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 people were talking stats let's talk stats real quick about like average attacks for commandos versus pikes on average they kill like something like 1.6 pikes with each shot no matter how many dodge tokens you have so one to two, closer to two than one, with each shot. That means that your bat, your you know, firing squad of three commandos picks up an entire pike unit every turn, basically. And you, they're only a, like a fourth of your RV, right? Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, that's not to say like obviously the pikes are firing back at you, but they're firing back at squads they can't delete in one shot because they've got katarn armor, right? And they have shields, like. 
I don't know. And not only that, but if you're trading like a 75 point clone commando unit for like bike squads, like I think you're very happy with that. Um, yep. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Should we talk about some list ideas? Yeah, let's do it. So, where, what's what's the first place you went when you, well, let's do commandos first and then we'll do range troopers. What's <laughs> the, the first place you went with commandos? Yeah. The first thing I did was I took my Yoda list. And I took all the full arcs out and I put clone commanders in. Which uh, increased it by one activation, potentially. So I mean, if you if you do I, a, a one for one swap, it would. But you're so, adding the other stuff back in there some more. So yeah, I, I did a couple things that were pricey. So I took I took out the two full arcs, I put in two clone commandos, and then I took out Echo. And I put in another clone commando because I topically think a third clone commando is probably better than having Echo in the list for nine points, just because they work really well in multiples. Um, I yeah, could, I, I, I think could be convinced otherwise. I think it's I think, three, I think it's three three or none with clone commandos. Personally, yeah. I'm also considering just dropping Padme for the list and having her slot be the third clone commando and keeping Echo, but I don't know yet. Dropping, I, I'm not dropping I'm not, Padme. That's yeah. That's 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 a tough sell. Yeah, but you know, um, for dropping the two full arcs to clone commandos, I like straight up net forty four points from that, um, which allows me to like upgrade my phase ones into phase twos, and upgrade Echo into the cl- another clone commando squad. So it basically allows me to play. Yoda with all courage, Yoda Padme with all courage two units. Um that's, whether that's good enough, I don't know. Um I do I think it's a little weird because you lose a lot of sharpshooter. Um yeah, but the luminous turn is straight up stupid. You get you just start with five aim tokens on that turn because they all have target right um and that seems really good you know you're like okay i get five aim tokens i immediately go with padme i'm up to seven you know um uh, i think it gets a little awkward and that i don't think the clone commandos are super good with relentless um not not the way full arcs are were no they're not um but you've got phase twos now so phase two z sixes are they're pretty decent with relentless like they're not full arcs but you know move move shoot at range three with a z6 is still a terrifying pool if you've backed it up with tokens so i don't know yeah definitely uh so the first place i went was (laughs) obi-wan um because those that don't know kyle's on an obi-wan kick since i I am on a little bit of an obi-wan kick um (laughs) The reason there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is that Obi Wan's awesome, obviously. Uh, <laughs> He's just Anakin, but better. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that that was true, you know, a month ago, necessarily, because Anakin definitely generates. There's, <laughs> there's one thing Anakin does better than Obi Wan, objectively, and that is generate dodge tokens, mm-hmm. right? He gets one from defend one, and he also typically has stance, so he gets one more there. So, so Anakin generates two extra dodge tokens relative to Obi Wan per turn. Um, there's a couple other things Anakin does better than Obi Wan, like kick off fire supports with the saber throw, etc. But you know, kill things in melee with his lightsaber. But as far as like the gun line attrition game is concerned, the relevant thing is that Anakin generates more dodge tokens. Now, if all the Republic players are packing triple clone commandos, generating two extra dodge tokens a turn not super useful right no not at all but uh being able to use guardian slash spend dodge tokens slash defect deflect wounds uh in a way that ignores high velocity when all your republic opponents are packing three units with high velocity uh previously was already useful right before that was a thing now potentially even more useful in my opinion seems seems like it would be useful every every Republic versus Republic game as opposed to just in some matchups elsewhere. Right. Uh, you know, the clone commandos kind of make it so that like dodge spam suddenly is not a good idea. And then Obi-Wan's like, 
actually your thing doesn't work on my dodge spam so <laughs> still fine yeah uh so yeah that's why the, i went to obi-wan the ultimate trump card yeah um high velocity does not ignore obi-wan's dodges when he uh spends rosu so um yeah so basically what the, this is uh it's got obi-wan padme with c's um three clone commandos a phase two Z six, a phase one with the DC fifteen, and naked phase one with a medic and a clone commander, and that is actually nine activations. So it allows you to go from eight to nine. Most Obi Wan lists are eight. Um, you could of course cut an activation to get some more medics here, which maybe that's a good idea. You'd have to cut either a commando or the commander, the clone commander. Uh, I don't know how I feel about cutting the clone commander because fire supporting clone commandos with literally anything seems great uh so i think you want those face ups personally but um yeah that's where i went and you can potentially obviously bad batch is not out yet and we don't fully know what they do but we know that uh their heavies are probably zero points because both the heavies that they've heavy upgrades meaning the individual squad members that they've previewed be in um crosshair and hunter are zero it seems likely that all of them will be zero, which means that their final cost is going to be 160. You can pretty much just like hard swap Bad Batch in there for Obi-Wan, and it actually that nets you like 35 more points, which you can use to beef up your core even more and still be at nine activations. So, Yeah. Um, seems good. I also like... Uh, I think like the time of the Jedi is over. <laughs> as far as all these lists go um so i'm i'm on the swap obi-wan for bad batch train i think uh yeah once I... once once bad batch is out i'm just hard swapping obi-wan anakin yoda whatever i'm just swapping in bad batch for it yep. yeah yeah um, because you kind of need to be more efficient these days than than jedi are allowing us to be i think yeah i agree which we'll get to a little bit more later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yes, we will. Um, you can also do like a pure clone gun line with, you know, without bad batch, without basically without a centerpiece unit and just do like clone commandos, Padme and a bunch of core units slash arcs that are also clones. And you can get that up to like, 11 activations 10, 10 to 11 and it's like it's like <laughs> yeah. it's and it's like there are no strike teams other than like maybe echo right you know and right. uh it's like oh <laughs> this is this is a lot more beef um and it's very shooty so and it's all like range four plus it's like an 11 activation everything in the list that's not a character shoots a range four um or yeah. and like can fire support a range four so yeah, that could be potentially really interesting too. So, all right, range troopers. I mean, w was it you that dropped the Palpatine list on us? The other it day? was me that yeah. dropped the Palpatine list. That is the first place I went. Yeah. Uh, let me let me see if I can find it, or just I, I can probably recite most of it from memory here. Um, so it was Palpatine with bar barrier, anger, and uh, burst of speed. And aggressive tactics, um, an IRG unit with protector, uh, three range troopers with the DLT, which is the impact one, um, two shores with each with a medic, and then two mortars. And that was nine activations. That's yeah, that's what it was. And it was, um, I think it was exactly 800 points, or it was very close, but yeah, um, that's where I went. For two reasons. A, I love Palpatine, and I'm like, anytime a new Empire unit comes out, I'm like, can I make a Palpatine list with this? <laughs> because w when I've played Palpatine, it's, I should have played it more, but uh, it, he's just, he just, he speaks to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I understand. <laughs> he, he's like, for what Yoda is to you, that's what Palpatine is to me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it could be pretty good. I mean, the the first thing that I thought about 
with ranged troopers relative to Palpatine is that advanced targeting trooper triggers when they attack, which can be triggered by pull the strings, right? There are other free aim abilities like target, independent aim, whatever, where you only get one aim a turn, and there's there's no way around that, right? Where, as with advanced targeting, you get one aim every time you attack, which in a Palpatine list is going to be, you know, an extra time, potentially. So usually that, like, extra Palpatine attack, you're not actually proccing whatever that unit's main token generating thing is. Um, you know, it's pull the strings has always been pretty interesting with shores, but you're only ever getting one aim out of that. With these guys, you get it every time you do it. You know, it's like using Bosk with Hunter, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which so, these guys also have a training slot, right? Like, um, that is a good question. I am not sure about that. Let me check. I thought they did. Um, I I don't know they, if it's good. They do not have a training slot. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do not have a training slot or a gear slot, which is like two big non <laughs> Uh Because clearly, and I think it's probably good for balance reasons. I mean, if they had a gear... You can't put scopes on these guys. Yes. <laughs> if they had a gear slot, clearly you would be putting scopes on them. If they had a training slot, you'd probably be putting Hunter or something else on there. Um, maybe you'd be leaving it blank. I don't know. Personally, I think these guys are pretty good lean at either 88 or 85 points with whichever heavy you want to go with. Man, I these chose... guys are cheaper than short troopers. Right? They, no, short troopers are 84 with the T21. All right. They're very close. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, which is itself kind of an indictment on their value relative to short troopers because short troopers only throw four dice at range four. Yeah. Short troopers are courage one instead of courage two. Uh, they do not have armor one. <laughs> <laughs> they do not have indomitable and they need an order to get their free aim token now the, the big difference really the only advantage that shores have relative to range troopers is critical one which means that they can convert that surge um, but if you've got a plan for aggressive tactics which at least in this Palpatine list you do uh, then you're converting that surge with a surge token so yeah I mean do you have an empty four slot in that list? No. Okay. I'm going to say guidance would probably be decent guidance too. would be another option for sure. Yeah. But well, that, that's a, that was, that's an interesting discussion too about Palpatine's four slots. Personally, I'm on train burst barrier anger. Um, yeah. I don't, personally, I love, I think you need to be using Palpatine's nuke at some point in the game to like get maximum value out of Palpatine. And if you don't want it to suck, you, you need anger. you need anger, yeah. Uh, uh, and that was true before the cover rules. Now, when you're often shooting into some kind of cover, like if you don't have anger, that lightning pool is really sad. Yeah, I uh, sort of. So the way I feel about that nuke nowadays, I actually, I don't like. Obviously, it can just win you the game. Yep. Right. But I think the amount of games it wins by killing things rather than putting a mobilized token thing, uh, mobilized tokens on things is far less these days. Um, That's fair. And the immobilized token thing has always been one of the strongest parts about it. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess what I'm saying is if the reason that it is good, better, obviously killing more things, always good. But I think we're living in a world where wounds are more and more and more precious giving them up to like make attacks and stuff is a rough sell to me in present meta yeah. um i don't know i think i i think i could see like dropping anger just because i think it's a little bit of a trap at the moment but i i don't know i mean i just like i think that they there are probably if if we like backtrack from two years ago to now, you probably are gonna play Palpatine's one pip like somewhere between a third and a half less of the times than you would have before. Maybe I, I could be wrong about that, but that's just my general sense of. For me, as a like a quote unquote Palpatine player, I say that because I haven't actually played him in a tournament in a while. 
Um, but as a previously very successful Palpatine player who loves Palpatine, yeah. Um, I would if I'm going in with a game plan of like I'm not going to use his nuke, then I'd just rather not play Palpatine. Like that's such a huge component of his value that, you know, in this same list you could basically throw Commander Vader in there, and it's almost a one for one swap in points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, well, maybe Commander Vader's better. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, and that's another option, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. While we're talking about list building, you know, it's it's a it's a list that plays very differently. Uh, because Palpatine certainly emphasizes obviously you got barrier in there, you got aggressive tactics, you've got your Royal Guard. He very much emphasizes like supporting the range troopers as a support force user, whereas Vader is like, you know, Vader's a drama drama queen, right? He, this list is about me. Uh, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna kill everything by myself and you guys, whatever. You do you. Um, so it's two totally different lists in in terms of how they play. But just as far as points structure is concerned, Commander Vader and Palpatine are the same cost. Yeah, and I actually, so, like, in regards to, like, just, like, swapping Vader in there, the range trooper's range is <laughs> long enough that um, you probably have to aggress into them in order to deal with them, right? Like, yep. you know, so that kind of makes Vader a little bit more tenable if, like... You know, one of the ways to deal with Vader is to kind of kite him out, right? You're just kind of staying away from him and his range three army. But if all of a sudden that army is no longer range three and the whole thing's range four, maybe that equation changes a little bit. Yeah, and that's kind of always been the, like, I have a playmaker force user and I want to make the maximum use out of him. The, the, in my opinion, the best way to do that has always been to force your opponent to come towards you at least a little bit. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's why, I mean, um, that was the whole concept of like four snipers in the 501st list. Yeah. You know, Yoda, Yoda arcs. You've got, you've got a range five advantage on your opponent. They, if they don't come to you, they're just like dying to small cuts. Right. Right. Um. So, I mean, range troopers are not small cuts though so no they're not <laughs> definitely not they're big cuts so uh, i know that there's been some hot debate about which heavy to take on them i think there's i think there's a defense for both cases oh sorry i gotta pull up something that shows me the heavies sorry. yeah no worries um it's the the dlt is uh double red in fact oh, two right, right, right. And the T21 is um, black, black, white, white, but suppressive. And that one's three more points. So it's 85 versus 88 is the total once you add it on to the range trooper list. Yeah, um, I mean, I think I'm sort of in the take what. So they do effectively, like obviously the one that has four dice has a higher ceiling yes which when uh, you're getting an extra free aim just for shooting something is relevant that's fair that's fair um i'm i'm not i don't hate the keep them as lean as possible plan yeah three and three points is not nothing yeah i mean like realistically unless you're cabbing out your aim token these should do about the same damage. Like yes. on a, on average, like obviously you it's the same on average. high or low, yeah. right? But right. um, the, the the odds of of how much damage you are going to do on any given shot is the same. So, like I think it's defensible to take the DLT. I think if you have the 12 nine points to upgrade all your range troopers to the guy that makes your ceiling better you go for it right and the suppressive is a big deal there too yeah uh especially if you're you can while well, we're talking about list ideas you can make some lists with range troopers that are like 10 to 11 activations and have seven range four units in them uh, whether that's some combination of mortars and death troopers and range troopers or your own Bosk in there. Um, it's, uh, 
you know, it, like it's feasible to have a list. I made a list the other day. Let me see if I can recreate it here. That threw out 14 suppression at range four. <laughs> a turn. Um, and uh, if if you're going for that, then you want the suppressive. You want the suppressive one. Um, Sorry, you said that and I threw up in my mouth a little bit. Um, <laughs> here, let me let me just make it real quick. Yeah, I'm making it right now. Um, I assume it's got three shores and three markers. It does. And it's like Imperial Officer Bosk. It was actually only range. two two shores and two mortars. Okay, well, three fits two, it looks like. Maybe. Uh, yeah, three fits. Yeah, you can do Officer, three shores, three mortars, three range troopers with the T-21. Yeah, I think I had dust troopers in there instead of like the extra um four units. I see. Okay. Like like a one of death troopers or something. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I'm just like not thrilled with death troopers with no IR. I, I know. To pull the to pull the wounds off. Um well you can like well you'd have to cut Bosk. But you can like also fit IRG alongside. There, there, it was a chronic list with uh, Death Troopers, IRG, three range troopers, and Shores and Warriors. Um, but yeah, you definitely want. I really like IRG alongside the range troopers because you know that armor is going to strip some extra hits, and then you have your protector IRG to deal with, uh, like the crits that come through or any other bigger pools that come in there. So, yeah, I mean, IRG, like obviously you're taking wounds on the IRG instead of like spending dodge tokens, but until they die, they're, um, I guess, questionably more effective than any dodge check in the game right now at saving units you want to save from dying. Um, just because there's, actually like no way to get around it yes right like high velocity doesn't do anything to it like you don't really run out of guardian until the unit is dead um yeah and, so and, yeah yeah so uh here i just made it w without the death troopers uh, just for you mike nice so imperial officer Bosk, Shores times three with the T21B, three mortars, three range troopers with the T21A. Yeah. So that is 11 activations. That's at 791, so you got some points for Bosk upgrades or a pair of Binox on the officer or whatever. Um, you have 10 units that can shoot at range four. <laughs> seven, seven of which are throwing out two suppression tokens. Yes, seven of which are suppressive. So... If if you're counting at home, that is uh, 17 suppression per turn at range four. And I think perhaps a little bit more importantly, it's what six nine is eleven suppression at a potential of range five if you're move shooting. Um, right, because so the, the mortars are the mortars. The yeah. mortars are not really range four. They're Correct. like they're yeah. range four with an asterisk. Um, right. Uh, but, but still, seven potentially seventeen suppression is right. You know, get your boy Krennic in there and yeah, go off to the races. I mean, you really could, frankly, cut a mortar to just be like, I'm gonna take Krennic and yeah. like and like some some other stuff or something, you know. Uh, yeah, and one of the reasons I had a version where I cut Bosk for Krennic and a Death Trooper with a relay. And the reason for that being, if you do like Krennic with aggressive tactics and then you have Death Trooper with a relay, you've got an extra face up. And these guys do really love surge tokens. Oh, yeah. Nah, man, getting surges so, on these guys seems like it's going to be going to be real good. Yeah. So, yeah, there. if you're going for the suppressive thing, I definitely can see just getting the suppressive gun. Um, if you're not doing that, the DLT is definitely a little more well-rounded, especially given that armor is kind of having a moment right now. Obviously, with Ollie's double bus win at Worlds, 
and armor just being kind of generally a good counter to experimental droids, which is obviously the boogeyman right now. Um, is it obviously the boogeyman? Is this another flawless transition? I think so. God, I think it is. <laughs> so we've already been going for a bit here, so I don't want to get like uh, too deep into the stats. I'm also, there's also going to be an article out this week um, that is on stats written by me from Adepticon. So if you want like all the super in-depth stats, go read that. But since we're talking about it already, why don't let's just hit the experimental droids win rate part of this. Okay. All right. <laughs> because it's absurdly stupid. Yeah. Uh for reference, real quickly, I think we can just talk about the overall faction win rates. Let's just hit sure. each faction's overall win rate. So mm -hmm. this is excluding mirrors. All of these stats are excluding mirrors. So we're when we're referencing a faction win rate. You know, Empire win rate, for example, that is excluding Empire versus Empire matches. This is only Empire versus something that's not Empire. And the same is going to be true of when we look at like experimental droids. It's going to be experimental droids versus something that is not experimental droids. So, uh, and this is from the World Championships both days, um, actually all three days, day one, day two, and day three. Obviously, the sample size is getting significantly smaller after day one, but still games that are relevant. Um, so the Empire win rate, 41.6%. Not very good. <laughs> um, the Rebel win rate, uh, 45%. Republic win rate, 50%. Big asterisk there, which we'll get to. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> um, Separatist win rate, 65.9%. So 66%. That is very high, just for the record. That's like, two-thirds two of the games. Yeah. Um, and that's Separatist overall as a faction. Right. So uh, and any any bad Separatist lists are in that total. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and then Mercenary win rate. So this would be Shadow Collective. 53.8%. And that actually feels low to me, especially considering that the world champ was running Shadow Collective. So when any when any one player goes 9 and 0, that's going to like significantly skew um not significantly because we are talking about even with Shadow Collective which was barely played, we're still talking about 100 games here against non-Shadow Collective lists. Um yeah. it will help help that number somewhat. But yeah, 53.8%. Um Sorry, I was going to say something and then I lost it. Let's continue. Yeah, and uh, on a similar point, um, you know, the there's there are a lot of games here, right? This is a pretty decent sample size. So, for example, that Separatist win rate for people being like, well, Luke Cook went 8-1 and one with Separatists, so that's going to bring that number up. Um, if you're talking about only the non-mirrors, so this is even cutting out extra games from the mirrors, you're still left with 234 games that Separatists played against somebody that's not a Separatist. Yeah. Which is a lot, you know. It, not... and, and I think I I, I want to go even farther with that in that this is also 234 good games. This is yes. not this is not 234 games where like people were getting um like easy draws round one and round two, right? This was like everybody had an invite. This like this was the show. Everybody there was good. Um, you know, there were people that got knocked out the first game of the tournament that could have won this whole thing, you know. Um, yep. So, like, this is 234 good games. High but, quality games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when, when you're talking about any sort of analysis of, like, balance or unit effectiveness or whatever, a game between two equally skilled and more relevantly to highly skilled players is going to be like significantly more beneficial than a game between two average players um, or an average player and a highly skilled player or whatever. Uh, so, and this is, this is a, on top of that, this is a big sample size. Yeah. So I think maybe to set the stage here, I think let's talk about what win rates might look like in a healthy environment. 
I, I think in my mind, it's somewhere in the, um, like the win rate should be like plus or minus 6% on the 50 scale, probably. Like if, if, if a faction's win rate fluctuates somewhere between like 56 and 44, like the out, the outsides there are obviously something that is concerning to look at but it's close enough to the average with the relatively low number of games played in Legion that it's probably okay. Yeah, and during most of Legion's history, the faction win rates for most of the factions have been between 45 and 55%. Yeah. Even when, you know, people will remember times where certain things dominant like like the spider meta, right? Where ion spiders were the thing for a good like 6 to 8 months the win rate of that list was 55%. Yep. So uh, for most of Legion's history, the win rates have been between 45 and 55%, almost pretty consistently. There are a couple outliers. Blizzard Force was close to 70, um, which was very high. Uh, so should we get to the experimental droids win rates? Yeah, let's do it. All right. The overall win rate for experimental droids, 71.5%. Which I think is the highest, at least in terms of like record, quote unquote recorded history when we've had actual stats to look at for any single list that we've seen in Legion. Yeah, this definitely backs up how I felt the day of, <laughs> as far <laughs> as like, this list is way, it's cracked. <laughs> well, if you, if you want to talk about so we can break this down by faction, experimental droids versus certain factions. Yeah. So this is where it's really going to be telling as to people's experience. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go in ascending, ascending win rate sure. order here. So, uh, separate separatists. So experimental droids versus other separatists, fifty five percent. That's the, um, that's the low end. Okay. Yep, mercenary, fifty-seven percent. Uh, obviously, Ali cleaning up experimental droids in some cases there, and in, in those matchups, um, rebels, fifty-seven percent. And having looked at the stats in a little more detail here, the the primary factor here in this making this a positive win rate was Ewoks. Mm, that's fair. Um, which kind of tracks? Yeah, yeah, they definitely have the. They've got tons of sharpshooter, tons of blast. That tracks. Yep. Um, Empire, sixty-five percent. That's pretty high, <laughs> but there's one faction left, and and notably, the faction that is left, they played against the most. Yeah, by like a lot. Uh, actually, yes, not by a lot. It's one more game than against Empire, but by a lot compared to the other three factions. Yeah, and that faction is Republic. And this number is 91%. <laughs> Experimental droids won 91% of their games against Republic. I would be interested to know how many of the games they lost were against Wookiees. That's that's an interesting question, actually. We can check. Um, because my experience day two was I played against Experimental droids in the hands of uh, some extremely skilled players. Um, two of which made the top four yep. and I have never felt so um, just like I, I had no idea how I was going to win the game like it just it, it felt like an impossibility but before we even started rolling dice um, to answer your question one of those wins was against Wookiees or one of those losses was against Wookiees sorry okay so 33% of their losses to Republic was Wookiees. Okay, All right. I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, to put a finer point on that number, by the way, we said the percentage, but Republic won three games. Yes. Against Experimental Droids. Three total across the entire tournament. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> and there was a lot of Experimental Droids. And there was yes. a lot of Republic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty... So, I think this is this kind of like hits home on... You know, I've been talking the last few podcasts about efficiency, and I Republic's just not efficient enough to deal with this list. Not with a Jedi. 
not, not with not with a Yoda. I mean, maybe maybe a Kenobi list that can sort of deal with, you know, um, Saray suing some stuff back at them can handle it. I I don't know, but Republic stuff is too expensive to be fighting against this list with Jedi. It's just not a. Well, and I've tried it without in practice games. It's even worse. Yeah, because one of the you know equalizer is the wrong term because clearly it doesn't get you anywhere close to like equal but um, we'd like to get this down to like a 70 percent win rate as opposed to 90 <laughs> yeah in the games that i've won against experimental droids with republic it has been with anakin when anakin gets involved like early yeah like turn and, two type right and it's a situation where you still get like thrashed on attrition and then anakin just wins it by himself he like saves out you know he makes a big miraculous like you know Youth. And then he, and then he cuts up like two BX units by himself, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's ugly. I mean, the you just can't go toe to toe with experimental droids on attrition, and that's what Republic is kind of trying to do, and it's just not a thing you can do. No. So no. It, and they're it, also like yeah. significantly better at objectives because, you know, they've got that kind of magic combo of, uh. Yeah, they're really, really good at attrition and they don't actually like need to be good at objectives, but they're also really good at objectives because of the flexibility of that on demand speed to remove. It's the same thing that Blizzard Force had going for it last year. And why I think it's a pretty similar, you know, even higher win rate is Blizzard Force was really good at attrition, right? Because they had the super efficient HRUs, they had the, the quad speeder bike, you had Vader in there before the force choke nerf. And, um, but it, Blizzard Force was also really good at objectives. It's like that magic combination that's pretty rare in Legion. Um, yeah. So. Blizzard Force at least felt beatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it felt like you were still having a game. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, uh, I I did not have that same experience you had with experimental droids so far. And I maybe think, that is because I'm playing Anakin instead of Yoda. It definitely. I think, I think Yoda just the extra squad that you, you essentially lose for taking Yoda um, or the ex extra points worth yeah. of a squad that you're losing for taking Yoda is, is a big deal in the raw number of wounds you have on the table. Um, and it just, it's uh yeah. I mean, it's like it's, the Yoda lists are sort of like predicated on not losing. Like you can sort of lose a unit and be okay. Once you lose two, You've got to have like killed half your opponent's army, or the, otherwise the game's sort of over. Um, and you just you can't kill half experimental before they kill two of your units. You're lucky if you kill one unit. Um, yeah, I have noticed just while we're talking about experimental droids, we should hit some counters here, right? Um, one of the things that I've noticed that helps, and again, this is from the perspective of playing. I've played several things into them in practice, but at least in tournaments, it's primarily just been Anakin. Um, it helps to go after the white save units first uh, to kind of burn through their repair. And sometimes you can just, especially with a fire support or something, you just straight up like a one shot of B1 unit. You definitely can, yeah. Um, and burn through that repair. Um, so go after the B1s, go after the B2s. I'm not saying you should like ignore the BXs if they give you a good shot. You know, uh, in my world game where I got eliminated by experimental droids. Um, it was not because of attrition. I actually I had a shot where I, I think I mentioned this in my world recap, but you know, I I one shot a BX droid unit. Uh, yeah. it was it was a lucky roll. Uh, it was an unlucky save, right? He rolled five blanks um after I'd already burned his shields. Um but it was a situation where like I had an open shot on a BX droid unit that didn't have its shields up and I had to take it. So I'm not saying like never shoot the BX droids because sometimes that works out. But um, personally, I found it more effective to kind of burn through the white saves first. And hopefully you're not like taking it on the chin from the BX droids in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, my experiences in all my games were that I was not really allowed to take those shots. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's fair. And, and I think... Look, I, I your your opponent was definitely very good, right? Um, but I do think that like people are figuring out, at least against Republic, like just don't let them shoot the white saves. You don't yeah. have to, 
Like you can just make put the BXs out there and force them to shoot them because the BXs are gonna do the damage, you know. Right. Um there so like if the BXs are the only thing you shoot, um yeah, it's rough. Um I mean it's okay. Uh I mean it's not okay, but the <laughs> you know, if, if people are gonna take Republic down a peg, whatever, that's fine. Um sure, yeah. But uh you know, as far as game state health goes, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, obviously, this is only one tournament, but it is a lot of games. Um, it's it a lot is, of high quality it, games. It is a pretty good data point for um, where the meta is. It's. I'm going to be honest, coming off that day, I was like, man, Experimental Droids is really, really, really good. But I would not have. The stats bore it out far better than i thought it was gonna be like i I was you know 75 to 82 percent against republic was my expectation um but 90 is uh it was it was a lot higher than i thought it would be too yeah i mean they only want republic only won three games against experimental droids yeah yeah that explains why only three colonists made day two right yeah yeah absolutely right like there was only there was only three of us and I don't think any of us. I don't. I, don't, I certainly didn't win any games on day two. Um, so, yeah. Um, and yes, I know that experimental droids did not actually win the tournament. Right? It, it got beat by an armor heavy armor skew. And experimental droids does have some counters. One of which is heavy armor. Yeah. Um. But heavy armor itself, not necessarily like as hyperbolically great in other matchups as experimental droids. And also like, even if you have, cause I know people, there have been people like, well, it doesn't need any nerfs. There are counters. People are just going to start all playing double bus. And it's like, well, if, if your meta is consisting of experimental droids and experimental droids as hard counters and nothing else, that's not a healthy meta either. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that any, any time that the meta is composed of things that like have 90% win rates against each other when they're like paired across the table against like the rock, paper, scissors of the meta. If we want to say we've got like armor in Empire, Republic gun lines and experimental droids as the corners of our triangle, right? Like, you know, where Republic beats Empire, um, empire armor empire armor beats experimental droids experimental droids beats republic like that's not fun that's not like showing up to games where it's just like yeah i've got like an 85 percent chance of just like winning the game based on who i pulled this round is i don't know yeah rock paper scissors is not inherently bad but it should be like you know if rock faces scissors that should be like you got a 55 to 60 percent chance not a i have a 90 percent chance yeah the game shouldn't be over before it starts it, it should be, it should be a slight advantage yeah. not a you know do we really need to play this game kind of situation um and a 90 percent win rate is a do we really need to play this game kind of situation it's so. it's beyond that a little bit yeah <laughs> um 90 percent is absurdly high but you know i mean i don't know the other factions seem to be doing okay against it i you say okay, but it was fifty-five to fifty-seven percent against the other factions with the smallest hey man. sample sizes. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Republic and Empire were by far the biggest ones as far as sample size, which makes sense because they had the biggest representation relative to the other factions, and you know that was sixty-five and ninety percent. So yeah. I suspect the games that Empire won as well are probably mostly Dark Trooper matchups. If I if I was a betting man, I don't know if that's something you could pull right this instant. It's not, unfortunately, because uh, I can do the, the Wookiee one was easy to check because Wookiee Defenders is a battle force, but sure. Double Dark Trooper is not a battle force. So, yeah. but yes, that seems likely is that they were either Double Dark Troopers or like Tempest Force. Tempest Force, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. All, all hail our robot good. overlords. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just started putting together my extra BX droids. Uh, I've always had enough to do it, 
I just never put them together because I only ever originally I just put together the strike teams. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I don't. Not that I'm going to play them like anytime soon. It's going to be testing and for fun for me for a while, which is probably going to include a lot of the new releases um, for science. But it's definitely something that I want to have just kind of put together for when it when it matters if this doesn't change. Um. And just selfishly, I think my droids probably look the best of any of the factions that I've painted. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to go in the doomsday thing, so I'm going to say this once, I'm going to, and then I'm going to drop it. But they said on stream that it was going to be like two years between balance updates. If if we got to go through like two years of playing against a ninety percent ext win rate. I'm gonna be really upset. That's all I'm gonna say. That's that's my that's my that's my shtick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Clone Commandos and Bad Batch will change this. I hope so, because Bad Batch's whole thing is like killing droids, <laughs> at least in the media. Um, we'll see if they're like super good at that on the table. That would be nice for Republic players. Clone Commandos, at least to me by themselves, don't appear like they would actually change this dynamic. In fact, they seem rather bad into experimental droids. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm like, I'm willing to try it. Obviously, like, yeah. you know, I'm I'm willing to see that like Republic's getting some new stuff, but also I also feel like um you shouldn't need new stuff to not get stomped into the ground. Yes. Um I, like yeah. that's not how this game is designed to work um and uh yeah. new releases should not be a replacement for balance right yes absolutely uh, power, um, power creep is not a replacement for balance put more yeah acutely power, yeah. power creep is obviously a thing right it's just yeah. like over a game's natural life cycle like that happens um but you know we definitely still sh like you shouldn't have to play clone commandos and like Okay, if you don't play Clone Commandos, maybe your win rate drops five percent. Okay, that's like reasonable, you know, uh, but it shouldn't drop like forty, you know. Um, so we'll see. Um, I think it, it, I think you're right though. If one of those uh, units changes the EXD into Republic equation, it's likely going to be Bad Batch, not Clone Commandos. Uh, yep, or Bad Batch plus Clone Commandos. But... Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, I think I, I think the one of the issues with clone commandos is that their raw dice pool is actually like doesn't throw that many dice. Um and I do think if you want to win against the XD, you just have to be able to like batter their shields down over and yeah. over and over again. Um and I don't think I suspect clone commandos don't do that enough unless they get to range two, in which case they're probably dead. Um so yeah, clone commandos look like they will be very good at poking. Yes. Which experimental droids is very good against. <laughs> so. Turns out. Um, yeah. Um, I do think I, I what I will say is that I do think that range troopers could be very good against them. Yes. With the combination of armor, like particularly if you back up your range troopers with an IRG protector unit. Yep. I actually think that range troopers could murder EXT in the, in that matchup. Yeah, they can almost kind of do this they do it in a slightly different way, right? That their their attack pool is not as splashy as like BX droids, but defensively speaking, they can kind of pull a similar trick where you have the armor one to just strip an extra extra hits, you know, in a similar way that shields do. You can back them up with medics. Not quite yep. as cheaply as repair droids, obviously, but you can also back them up with Guardian, which BX droids don't have. Um, so yeah, I think I think one of the biggest flexibility options with EXD though is functionally EXD does it cares about positioning, but it cares a lot less than other armies about its positioning of its units relevant to one another um yeah just because the special abilities of the battle force don't re like they're they go so far it doesn't really you don't have to keep them as centralized 
Whereas I do think that if you're like leaning on an IRG protector unit, um, similar to clones, like you're kind of caught in that range one. Everybody's got to be close to each other bubble. Um, yes. Which, which leads into kind of like the conversation we were having before where EXD just kind of happens to naturally be good at objectives. Like one of the reasons for that is they're not tied down to a specific location on the board because of where the rest of their army is. Yes. And it's, it's the rare separatist army that can actually spread out if it needs to. Yeah. 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 And like, you don't, you don't have to worry about chaining things for the most part. Like obviously yeah. you're going to coordinate to your beat like two B one units and they'll do the chain thing, but you know, whatever. As long as your two B one units are next to each other, it's you're fine. It's got to ever up. Yeah. Irrelevant. Yeah. Um, yeah yeah so we'll see uh range troopers definitely could change that calculus um man i wonder what qui-gon jinn would do in this uh <laughs> this matter <laughs> or jar jar binks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah maybe maybe we'll find out someday yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we should probably end on that note yeah yep, 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 yep. everything in this episode 100 percent real <laughs> and not fake <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah right. no just to be clear these win rates yes this was uh yeah these are actual, actual stats yes yeah um, so. uh all right uh, we'll stop doing that disclaimer starting yes. next week yeah. but <laughs> it seems necessary at least for today so yeah, yeah, yeah. all right we are the notorious scoundrels of Cal. and i'm mike stay fresh cheese bags <laughs>